Hey everyone, um, this time I'm going to take a look at some of the bigger picture things. Um, obviously, uh, the budget we're looking at uh, this uh, on this slide here. So the fiscal year 2024 budget for NASA was finally enacted. Um, it was passed by both chambers of Congress last week and then signed into law by the president um, in the last couple of days. And that's right on the uh, right on the eve of the release of the president's budget request for fiscal year 2025. So um, while we're waiting for Starship uh, IFT3, um, it's there's a lot of budget uh, information to take a look at, um, starting with the this minibus that was just passed. These are, you know, these are these are the these are the high level things that we'll take a look at here in a little bit of detail, and then I'll also talk about. Um, a little bit about the uh, RS-25 retrofit 3B test. Um, and also the there, there wasn't a lot of other imagery released during the week, but we can go over uh, a little bit of that um, while, you know, in between the, the budget for the, the current year finally being passed and then the budget for uh, fiscal year 2025 um, coming out tomorrow. The FY 2024 minibus that was passed last week by Congress and signed into law by the president lowers the exploration budget ceiling. The top line was cut from the requested $7.9 billion down to $7.67 billion. At the same time, Congress kept Orion and SLS funding at higher FY 2023 levels and also funded HLS and XEVA at the requested FY 2024 levels. So the cuts that Congress made are really to the other major programs under the Moon to Mars Program Office, Exploration Ground Systems and Gateway. Looking at the numbers, if we take the 7.666 billion top line appropriated and subtract out the priorities, SLS at the FY 2023 level of 2.6 billion, Orion at its 1.34 billion 2023 level, HLS at the FY 2024 request of 1.89 billion and XEVA at 380 million. That leaves about 1.47 billion for EGS, Gateway, and Exploration Planning and Research. Compare that to the 1.71 billion that was requested in FY 2024 for EGS and Gateway or the nearly $2 billion requested for those two Moon to Mars programs and the exploration planning and research. This seems to draw a line between the programs needed to accomplish the Artemis III mission objectives and the additional work needed after Artemis III. SLS and Orion are still the highest priorities, including development of the exploration upper stage and the SLS Block 1B capability that won't launch until Artemis IV. However, EUS and Block 1B won't have any place to launch from until Mobile Launcher 2 is completed. ML2 is already over budget and behind, but cutting the EGS budget seems like it will make it harder to hold schedule. That schedule still remains to be seen. Similarly with the Gateway co-manifested vehicle of the PPE and Halo, while it's not guaranteed that the schedule would improve with extra funding, Cutting the gateway budget still doesn't seem like it will help the schedule. It seems like Congress is kicking Artemis IV and beyond down the road. Something that might only interest me is the enacted appropriations bill omitted the SLS 130 metric ton language for seemingly the first time in a long time. The language remains in effect as a part of the NASA authorization bill passed into law in late September mid-October of 2010, but it remained in almost all of the appropriations bills that passed Congress and were signed into law on an annual basis. Obviously, Senator Richard Shelby retired, and this is the first appropriations since that retirement. The language made it into the House Commerce, Justice, and Science Appropriations Bill for, 20, for fiscal year 2024, but not the Senate's version. As noted, the requirement remains in effect, but that symbolic duplication was removed, and I'll be curious to see if there's anything more to that or not. NASA Public Affairs at Kennedy Space Center did post a couple of images on social media of one of the Artemis II Center Center SRB segments being moved to the Surge 2 building. 
As noted in a couple of recent videos, now that the NASA worm logo has been painted on those two center center motor segments, they will be stored in the Surge 2 building of the Rotation, Processing, and Surge facility, the RPSF. They are now waiting, like the rest of us, to find out when they will be stacked on Mobile Launcher 1 in the Vehicle Assembly building for Artemis 2. The ninth hot fire test in the RS-25 Retrofit 3B certification series was conducted at Stennis Space Center on March 6th. Engine 0525 is being used for both halves of Retrofit 3, with the rest of the 3B second half expected to be completed this month. The engine was fired for 600 seconds from the start command to shutdown, and that was covered on the NASA Stennis livestream as usual. Test objectives and specific goals for Retrofit 3B have not been detailed, and not much was revealed in the video from this test. Hopefully there will be a little more details on the roadmap for RS-25 production restart certification as the test series concludes. The President's fiscal year 2025 budget request is still planned for tomorrow, March 11th. We will be looking for the agency baseline commitments for HLS Option A, the Artemis 3 Starship HLS, and for the Gateway PPE Halo launch somewhere in the documentation and or briefings. And of course, we'll be watching to see when the FAA licenses the third Starship flight test. There's plenty of coverage of that important test for many other channels. Thanks for watching. Um, as always, uh, hope this is interesting to people. This is obviously something that I nerd out over all the time. The um, I'm working on this SLS core stage production video, the second part. Um, maybe I'll be able to get it out. Hopefully I can get it out here uh, before uh, the Starship IFT, although I think people would rather see the Starship flight than, than a uh, production video. But... Um, Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can get that out in the next week or so. And uh, obviously going to be looking ahead to the, the budget release tomorrow. And we'll, we'll see what we get with that. And, hope, and I'll, you know, hopefully I can come back uh, also and, and talk about that here in the next coming days. But again, thanks for sticking it out. If you made it all the way out here, thanks for sticking it all the way out to here. And uh, hopefully I will see you next time.